And maybe if you ask, maybe I'll recall some, some more things. So, yes, please go ahead. How does the book of Zohar relate in reference to the Torah? All of the holy books, they start with a book written by Adam. Humanity started developing in our world hundreds of thousands of years ago. But 5,771 years ago, there was a man. His name was Adam. And he was the first one that discovered the spiritual world. And he wrote a book about it. This book is called Raziel the Angel, the Concealed Force. That is the first book in the Wisdom of Kabbalah. After it, there were 20 generations of Kabbalists and 20 generations after him was Abraham. Perhaps other books were written because also in the book of Zohar it's written that this book written by him or this book written by, by that meaning there were other books in those 20 generations that did attain spirituality but they didn't remain. We don't have them. It's possible that we might just suddenly find them. The second known book from those who had spiritual attainment is the book written by Abraham called the Book of Yetzirah, the Book of Creation. We can also study that book. After Abraham, there were a few several other books that were written, and amongst them is the Great Midrash. And we can study that as well. And although for all these things we don't have time but we attain everything from what we study and these books we have are enough and the next book the next important especially important book is the book written by Moses he wrote a book called the Torah the Zohar is actually is this Zeira Ila'a the light of Ensof this sublime light which shines to a person and the Torah also comes from the word Or, light and from the word also Hora'a which is instruction and in that book written by Moses, it's also written in a consistent manner from the creation of reality until a person corrects himself. It was written for the first time in a systematic manner. That's why this book is so well known and so important and original. Moses, he revealed more than anyone else did. And he did it alone. 
That was a very, very uh, special soul. After him, there were many of his students. And they wrote many books. We call these books the books of the prophets. The prophet is a person who reached the clear revelation of the Creator, the upper force that dwells between us. There are prophets who write on the degree of Bina, and then they say, I've heard, and then the rest of the name. And there are those that I saw on the degree of Chokhmah, on a higher degree. The books of the prophets. And then the, the writings that's also written by Kabbalists. The Hagograph. They also talk about the spiritual world, the upper world, because they have nothing else to talk about besides the attainment of the upper world. No one wrote about our world. So we have the book of Adam, the book of Abraham, the book of Moses, and then the prophets and the Hagograph, which is the written. And then came other books which were written like the Talmud, the Mishnah, and parallel to the Talmud, the Book of Zohar was written. Rabbi Akiva had two students. One wrote the Talmud, that is 2,700 pages. And the other student, Rabbi Shimon, he wrote the Book of Zohar. So it's like these two great people, great students of Rabbi Akiva. And, well, after that, people started writing more and more and more, many, many books, until our days. The Book of Zohar was written as an interpretation of Moses' book, the Torah. And if we open the book of Zohar, it's written, the book of Zohar on the Torah, about the Torah. And just as Moshe writes in the Torah, it's it's order how a person comes and corrects himself from the point in the heart, how he goes through his Egypt and go at, goes out into his desert to his degree of Bina that he acquires and onwards. The book of Zohar continues that same sequence. But Moses writes it in a very uh, unclear manner. We've all read it. It's as if it uh, talks about history book. It's like, it's like it's the history of this ancient nation that has experienced many events. But of course it does not talk about that. But it talks about spiritual upper levels, upper degrees. And therefore the Zohar takes this story and opens it up. It explains what happens. That's why the Torah by Moses 
it can be understood only after we learn the wisdom of Kabbalah, after we read the book of Zohar, and then we begin to understand what Moses wrote. Without that, this book is just a story. A nice, interesting story. Talks about history. But where is there something that's written correctly about the Creator? That He speaks to people, and He turns to Moses, and He does all these kinds of miracles. But to understand these things truly, we must have the Book of Zohar. Because, of course, it does not talk about our world. It talks only about the man's inner work and how it takes place inside. And the fact that in our world, people want to see these things as if they happened. Well, it's good to tell kids about it. But for us, we don't get anything out of it. So, of course, these books, they have to be divided uh, in the following way. If we want to correct ourselves, the book of Zohar is, for us, a workbook. In addition to that, of course, is the book written by the Ari, that is the Tree of Life, that Bala Sulam wrote uh, the interpretation for it, the commentary for it, called The Study of the Ten Sefirot. And today, we have two books by Baal Sulam to study. The Study of the Ten Sefirot and the Book of Zohar. These two books cover everything. Besides them, we don't actually need anything. Only in order to approach them correctly, we have the right intention, we have the, we have the group which was built correctly, like Rabbi Shimon's students. And for that, we need also additional articles. Also, Baal Salam wrote them, and also Rabash wrote, my teacher. And they wrote them in order to give us the right approach to these books. And that is actually about the books. Yes, please. <laughs> 